Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast. This is Bob Shoneman alongside Pete Robertson. Hey. Happy Thanksgiving, Pete. Yeah, it is. It's that time of the year again. Do you have your stretchy pants ready? <laughs> that made me think of Nacho Libre. <laughs> That's why I said it. <laughs> you got to wear your stretchy pants. Have you ever seen Nacho Libre? One time. You, you know, I had to. You cheeps. and Barry kept talking about it, and I had never seen the movie. So, so I had to. And I watched it. I'm like, really? That's what it was? That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's, you it's, guys had built it up so huge and had no chance so, of living up. There are so many quoted lines <laughs> in that. And and it's it's how many youth pastors have used Nacho Libre and sermons? Maybe that's my problem. I was yeah. never a youth pastor, yeah. so that's why it's so yeah. funny to you guys. Oh yeah, we saw it completely different. Stretchy pants. Yeah. yeah. My stretchy pants. <laughs> or my holy chips. Yeah. <laughs> It's just really funny. Well, you can see what part stuck to my mind, right? Yeah. Well, you, uh, I mean, we, um, you know, today we're going to talk about being thankful when life isn't fair. So it's it's a little bit more than just a Thanksgiving show. But, I mean, there's so many things in our past or on Thanksgiving. What are some highlights that you can think of that you've done maybe when you were a kid or when yeah. you were older? Or what are th- is there Man, anything have, that pops in your mind? I have great memories of Thanksgiving. It was yeah. always going to grandma's house. Yeah. So grandma would have, uh, man, just the food galore, pie, freshly made pies. Wow, yeah. um, you know, the picture of the, the roasted turkey with the perfectly brown, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just perfect, right? Yeah. Every year. It was, um, it was, I don't know how she did it. She was amazing. And uh, this is my dad's mom. And uh, just, just, those are my memories just going to the, her house. And then after they passed, I, um, my mom was still here. You know, I had my mom probably 20 years after my dad and my grandmother, and uh, we would just go to my mom's house and that was it. Everybody would, everybody would come to mom's house. So, and uh, when mom died on a good Friday of 2019, we decided, you know what? She, she worked at the cruise port, so she would help people get on the cruise boats and uh, so we, you know, like, let's, let's go on a cruise in honor of mom. So we took a, my family on uh, a Thanksgiving cruise three years ago. That was awesome. That is cool. So, cool memories. I, I mean, I don't have, what's really funny. I mean, we got together as a family all the time. I remember I have my, like, it's, she, we call her our adopted sister and their family. We would get together and do Thanksgiving. Um, I remember when my grandma was around, we did that. And we always had a lot of food. We always brought, everybody brought food. We always had that. I remember that. I just don't have a, a lot of memories for whatever reason. But what I do remember is, is for a few years, I we had like this competition thing going on with with the brothers and with my son and and some of my kids, where we would do like some sort of sporting activities or something. You gotta have the Thanksgiving yeah. football game. Yeah, we had you something. Have to. We had that a little bit, and then we had like a trophy. So whoever won, <laughs> yeah, we got they got a trophy, <laughs> and it went around to different families each year. So I remember that was it. Was it like a Jeremiah bobblehead doll? Because that would be like the perfect trophy. No, that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. This is a bobblehead in general. I love that. I got a few bobbleheads. I don't know. If, I used to have some in here. We used to have Albert Pujols and Mike Trout in the studio, but we don't anymore. Shannon O'Keefe. Yeah, Shannon O'Keefe. Oh, she just got I one. have one. Oh, I have I a bobblehead of hers. Yeah, I saw that. But um, anyway, so that's it. I mean, I have more memories with Christmas than I do with Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things though, if I, if there was anything that stands out the most, my mom, she would always, I mean, my mom would always tell like some sort of story, right? So she made it why we're thankful. And so she would make sure everybody listened. She would write it out or she would, you know, print it out and she would tell us some sort of story, you know, something that happened on that day or something about Thanksgiving. And then she would make all of us. And sometimes we would have like 40 people there. She would make every one of us say what we're thankful for. That's awesome. Yeah. So my mom would every year would make sure she did that. And so I promise you, because my mom is flying out and she's going to be here this Thanksgiving or be here actually today. And she's uh, she, she will make sure that we all say, what are you thankful for? So I just can't wait to That's hear that. That's so awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just thought of another what? great Thanksgiving memory. That's what? not nearly as touching as yours was. What? Do you remember the Leon Lett football game, Miami Dolphins at Texas when they were still in the old stadium and it was snow, it was covered, the field was covered with ice. Against Dallas? Le- yes, Leon Lett fumbled the, fumbled the punt return for the Dolphins to win or something like I that. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I the mean, Leon Lett game. Well, when we were growing up, it was always just Dallas and Detroit. That That's was it. it. Yep. 
And then over the years, now, though, three games. now they have different games and it's just a variety. The one is a variety of different players, but Dallas and Detroit are still always, always, at always yeah. play at home. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I remember um, John Madden getting the turkey legs. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. I miss John Madden. I do too. He was one of the best announcers. He good. Really brought it in. So, all right, well, let's dive in. Let's get going. Let's pray. I mean, let's, uh, I'm really looking forward to the show. I mean, this will, I know will. You know, here, you know, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving, but I mean, let's hear how, you know, why we can be thankful even when life isn't fair. I mean, there's, I mean, every day we're going to be faced with various trials. Every day we have problems and issues. And so we're just going to kind of, you know, walk through. I mean, it's the time of Thanksgiving, so let's talk about it. So, all right, let's pray. Excellent. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you. It's Thanksgiving. And uh, I know we celebrate this in America. Maybe some people are listening around the world that don't uh, don't know what we're talking about. But uh, it's just a special day that's set aside to uh, to thank you, Lord, for uh, just the, for, our, for protection, for provision, Lord, for uh, just everything you've done for our land, Lord. And uh, just excited about that and alone. But Father, I want to thank you for our listeners. Thank you for this podcast. Ask you to use it in a mighty way to draw people to you. So, Father, we give you this show now. We give you our listeners in Jesus' name. Amen. Gonna, you, you, I was going to have you do the opening statement, but there's a first part of this I'll, I'll read. It says, Thanksgiving Day marks an annual celebration of family food, food, <laughs> food. Can I say that right? Football and fun. But for Christians, Thanksgiving has a much deeper meaning that goes to the core of our spiritual belief. And I think yes. a lot of Christians know that. And I think a lot of people think, oh, we're, there's, there, for everything that we have, there was a beginning. Well, we're, let's talk a little bit about that beginning and, and how it originated and why we do what we do. Like you just said, there's many places around the world that doesn't have a Thanksgiving. Maybe they have something similar, right. but we have this, and let's talk about that a little bit. So, Yeah, go ahead. just continue on. Yeah. All right, so the original Thanksgiving yeah. celebration – um, was held by the pilgrim settlers in Massachusetts. I mean, how many of you guys dressed up in school, you know, yeah, for pilgrim? Right, I, right. Maybe I'm too old, but uh, we, oh, yeah. we would dress up for we Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah. And um, so it was the second winter in America, December, 16, uh, December 1621. The first winter, who brutally, had killed 44 of the original 102 colonists. At one point, their daily food ration was down to five kernels of corn apiece, but then an unexpected unexpected trading vessel arrived, swapping them beaver pelt, pelts for grain. Beaver pelts? Did you real? Th this is true. This, you <laughs> this didn't make this history. up, did you, Pete? No, this is history. All right. Yeah. The next summer's crops brought hope, and Governor William Bradford decreed that December 13th, 1621, to be set aside as a day of feasting and prayer. Our yeah, feasting and prayer to show the gratitude of the colonists that were still alive. These pilgrims seeking religious freedom from an opportunity, uh, seeking religious freedom and opportunity in the new world in America, gave thanks to God for his provision for them and helping them find 20 acres of cleared land, divine intervention, yep. for the fact that there were no hostile native Indians in that area divine intervention yep. for the newfound religious freedom and for God's provision of an interpreter to the native Americans in Squanto. I love talking about him yeah. along with the feasting of, and games involving the colonists and more than 80 native Americans who added to the feast by bringing wild Turkey and venison. Ooh, they brought the protein. Pete. Yep. Prayers, sermons, songs of praise were also very important in the celebration. Three days were spent in feasting and prayer. Wow. Can you imagine yeah. if we did three days of Thanksgiving? Oh, now? I wish we would. The have. gluttony that. Oh, we, wow. See, because we've got it backwards now. Now it's about gluttony. It used yeah. to be about Thanksgiving. Wow. All right. From that time forward, Pete, Thanksgiving has been celebrated as a day to give thanks to God for his gracious and sufficient provision. And then President Abraham Lincoln officially set aside the last Thursday of November in 1863 as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our benef beneficent father. Yeah. And then in 1941, Congress ruled that after 1941, so from then on, it, Thanksgiving would be held on the fourth Thursday of November. So didn't change it every time, but sometimes there's five Thursdays. So that, that, I guess that's the actual change. So history says that in December 13th, 1621 was when this all started taking place. And so that from that point until today, Abraham Lincoln, though, in oh, 1863, yeah, yeah. so that's 100 and whatever years later, they're still doing that. Yep. 
And then 1941, the Congress said, hey, we should make this official. And then they brought it federal in. Federal holiday. Yep. Yeah. So let me, let's just give a really background. Who are the, who are the pilgrims? Um, uh, we know them as a Puritans. They were the ones that were um, running from the Roman Catholic Church. I shouldn't say running. They were just persecuted by the Roman Catholic Church in England and all of Europe. Um, and so they started mobilizing, going to Holland. They started going to higher locations in Scandinavia and so forth. And then they got onto a pilgrim and God called them to another land and called them to another place. And and that's where uh, they got on the, the Mayflower from, I think it was Holland, I think, right? I think, I think so. so. It's in that the area. Roman, you said the Roman Catholic, wasn't the Church of England in, involved in that too? In that persecution? Well, they were it all depends on where they were, I guess. Well, no, I mean, because in England at that time too, there was a fight between being Catholic and yeah, being uh, Protestant. Yeah. And so there was always that fight that was going on Crazy. and they were, they were, they had a Protestant belief before it was called Protestant, right? They, they were, they were living a life that we call them the Puritans. They were living a different life. They were, they were trying to be obedient by what the word of God was saying and the best that they knew. And so they, the God, God called them to this other land. And so that's why they came. And that's how Amen. we were established from the very beginning. So any thoughts on, I want to talk about Quanto and man, and there's some so, I think we, we may have talked about this last hmm. year, but yeah, Squanto is one of my favorite characters in I was history. Calling Quanto, so it's Quanto. Yeah. What did you call it? Quanto. Quanto. <laughs> Quantico? No, <laughs> that's something else. Squanto. Yeah. So I, I'll just give you, a, for those of you who have, haven't heard the story of Squanto, this is, this is miraculous. First of all, the, the Mayflower lands on this piece of land, and there just happens to be no native native population there. It's because in Plymouth, Plymouth, Massachusetts. Plymouth, Massachusetts. Yeah. So, uh, tragically, um, to to this tribe, there was a tribe that lived there that got wiped out by smallpox, or they think smallpox. And then, because it was, you know, the surrounding tribes were aware of what happened there, they like avoided that area because they were kind of afraid of it. Like, oh, there's evil spirits there; we can't go there. But before that plague, like right before the year before that plague, this guy named this uh, Indian named Squanto. Can I say Indian anymore? Is that a lot? Yeah, yeah. Squanto was captured by these evil traders that came over in, in ships and, and like captured um, um, Native Americans and took them back to Europe as slaves, sold them as slaves. Now, this one guy, Squanto, he was captured, taken as a slave, sold, taken back to Spain. And like these monks were like, they were trying to help out the slave, you know, try to stop the slave trade. So they bought him in freedom, taught him, you know, the ways of the world, educated him. And then somehow Squanto earned his way and got back to England and learned English. So he learns English, you know, learns, the, you know, the, the white people's ways and all that stuff, but wants to come back and see his family. He wants to make sense, right? So like 10 years go by and he get, he comes back, gets on a, uh, on a ship, comes back and goes to his land and there's nobody there everybody's dead in fact had he been there he probably would have been dead too so he's just living the land and this is the guy the pilgrims end up running into this guy so they're in this new land and a, a native american walks out and speaks perfect english in a land that's not occupied by hostile people trying to kill them. <laughs> and he teaches them, really, the reason they survive is he teaches them how to plant how to plant corn by putting it inside of a fish and then planting in the ground so that it has fertilizer and things like that. He teaches them and he was you know, how to catch the between eel. the natives. Yes, and yeah. then helps broker peace deals yeah. and peace treaties with the other Indian tribes, which is why they survive it. And literally those... I think I remember reading it's like 50, 60 years those peace treaties kept, you know, where there were lots of issues in the new world where there was fighting going on. But here they were at peace for like 50, 60 years before there were any issues. Well, well what a miracle, you know, <clears throat> that God had just, you know, and you may not believe it was a miracle, but they believed it was a miracle. They absolutely believed that this was all divine intervention. Well, and again, at the very beginning, they, they were pure in heart, right? So when politics got in, that's when it made it worse. So politics got in and they said, well, Indians, we don't want you living in this land. We want to take and occupy this land. And then they were looking for an opportunity to be able to work together. Yeah. At the very beginning, there's many different, and I talked to you about another article I read that was not this, about another Indian that that came in contact with a Puritan. And they would talk about, well, how kind they were, yeah. how they worked with them and how, you know, they were actually loving and gentle. Well, 
you know, Christians as a, as a whole, that's our heart. That's our desire is to work with everybody, to love everybody, to be a part of that. But when politics got involved in it and the military got involved in other things, they started demanding things and not working together any longer. And they started saying, no, you're not going to have this. Well, they're like, why can't we have this? We lived here before you. This is our land. This is where we're at. So let's work together. Let's let's go and have it together or whatever that was. And that's where all that bad stuff started taking place since then. Mm. So anyway, so I mean, the bottom line is that's where Thanksgiving started. They were thankful for what they had. They were humble about it. They came together as, as a people. You know, they were different cultures. They were different. You know, the Indians brought the turkey and they brought the farm and whatever they had. And they just broke bread and they spent three days worshiping God and they spent sp- three days yeah. giving thanks. And um, and here it is, half of them are dead because of the, the ice that took place and they didn't prepare for the winter. Um, but they were still grateful and thankful, Thanking even God. in hardship. Man, so good. Yeah. All right, let's get started. Statement yeah. one. Man, I love that story. Yeah. I could talk about that all day. Yeah. Scripturally, we find things related to the issue of Thanksgiving nearly from cover to cover of our Bible. Individuals offered up sacrifices out of gratitude in the book of Genesis. The Israelites sang a song of thanksgiving as they were being delivered from Pharaoh's army after crossing the Red Sea. You can find this in Exodus 15, 15. It says, then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Into the, sea. the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. I mean, I think everybody that's listening to this can testify that they're, they've been in a great trial in their life and that they've come through it, right? And they're on the other side of the great trial. So, you know, how do we respond after that trial is kind of shows where our heart is, right? And so here they are in that great trial and they're giving thanks Um, to the Lord. They're singing a song, their praise. We're going to talk about this a little bit later, but it's, they, they, they set apart a time to really give God glory where he deserved in the, in the pilgrims, you know, perspective, they were in the midst of of harsh winter, right? Or they're coming through the second winter, their first winter killed off half their people. So now they're in their second winter, but even though they've been through all of that hardship, and I'm sure at that time, they're still trying to figure out how to navigate the land and how to cultivate and how to, you know, create crops and everything else. And they're still dealing with uh, a culture they don't understand with the natives that are local and all of this. But even in the midst of that, they recognize, no, we need to give thanks. We, no matter how life is, no matter how it is, it's so important for us to remember that Jesus is in control and that we were to worship him. So any thoughts on that? I, I came across a couple of quotes um, mm-hmm. Tony, you guys, everybody knows Tony Robbins, right? Yeah. He's even got a good quote on this. He says, when you are grateful, fear disappears and abundance appears. Yeah. Isn't that good? Oh, yeah. It's really good. And then uh, I'll share one more for now. And I got a couple more I want to share later. But Todd Stocker, and I don't know who he is. I so don't ask. But I wanted to give him credit for the quote. Thankfulness creates, a grati- creates gratitude, which generates contentment that causes peace. Yeah. Amen. And there's, it's so true, right? Well, I mean, the key word in that was contentment. So it's, it's, it's when we are settled in our spirit and we're content. So if we're fighting through the trial, if we're fighting through whatever circumstance that we're in in life, we're, we want it this way. We see that it's best this way. And if we're in that mentality, we cannot be content and we cannot be thankful. But if we can be content and say, thank you, Jesus, that my car started this morning. Thank you, Jesus, that I have multiple pairs of socks and shirts and shoes. Thank you, Jesus, if you have hot water or electricity. Thank you, Jesus, if you have a phone. Thank you, Jesus, that you could breathe, that you have two eyes or one eye or whatever it is. You have uh, something to be thankful for. And, And I think that there's so many victories every day. If we could just see that from that perspective. I think we can then move forward. So let's let's kind of now let's grasp how the Israelites were okay. were thankful. And so let's talk about that. All right. The Mosaic law set aside three times each year when the Israelites were to gather together. All three of these unleavened the unleavened bread are also called the feast of the Passover, uh, the harvest or Pentecost, and the feast of ingathering or the tabernacles. 
that were set up to remember what God had done for them and to be thankful. So one of the things that I do, in the, and I learned this from the Israelites, and so because of this, I've learned it. So whenever God has done something great in my own life, I would create pillars. Or if he's doing something in my life, I would create pillars in my life. So let me tell you one of the stories. And I might have shared this on the podcast many years ago, but there was a time in my life where I, my wife and I, we were, I don't know, it sounds so weird saying this, but we were millionaires, I guess, if you want to call it that. And we had so much money and we had all this property and we have all these things. And we went through this season where we lost literally everything. And we got to the point where we were homeless almost. And well, at one point we were homeless for nine months, but we had no food really. We lacked electricity. We lacked you know, we, we had to have miracles take place and lots of miracles. And I, I don't want to get into those right now, but I was at the end of my rope. And I remember I was yelling at the Lord and I just could not comprehend why he was doing this to me. And, and I had to go through this, but he stripped me of all of these uh, bad habits that I had. I had so many, and um, I just wasn't that very good of a person, you know, even though I was involved in church and all this, I just, I just wasn't loving. I wasn't kind. And, and, and so God had to strip me. And I remember yelling at God and, and I remember just telling him, I just don't understand what he's doing, you know, but I never gave up on him. I didn't want to quit. But right after that, um, he just brought some calm and these peace in my heart. And he told me, stop trying to worry about how you're going to make money or stop trying to figure it all that. I just want you to worship me right now. And, and he, and I just said, Lord, I gotta, he goes, I want you to paint. And it was really weird. I just started painting. I had no idea. I have never painted in my life. I have zero artistic ability ever, right? Nothing. And I just started creating these paintings, these abstract paintings. And I created maybe like seven or eight of them. But every one of those paintings, I never before that had ability, uh, wanted ever to paint. And I never after that have ever wanted to paint. It was only during that season that I had the want to want to paint. But every time that I look at those paintings, it always reminds me of how God got me through it because every one of those paintings have a heart on it. They all have a heart. They all talk about God's love and they all talk about how he is faithful. One of them is um, by God's grace. One of them is uh, I surrender all one of them, their name, they're titled each one of those paintings. And so those are pillars for me. And so I look back on that hard time in my life and that's there. Other things that I do, I also have a diary, or if you want to call it that, I, I'm trying to work on making it digital. I still write in, my, in a book, but I go back and I can see all the different times that God has answered prayers. And, and those are pillars. Those are things. So, so I, I think that by doing that, it helps us to continually be mindful that our God is faithful yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yeah. And if we go back and we're thankful for what he's done in the past, we can be thankful for what he's doing right now. So thoughts on that? Good. You, you brought up the Israelites, you know, and, and, and what they did. I always think about the, the 12 stones. I don't know. As soon as you started talking about that, I kept th I thinking about the 12 stones by the river, by yeah. the Jordan River. Well, that's what they did. So God yeah. constantly told them, if you read in the Old Testament, whenever he did a great battle or he did something, he said, build this up so that you would remind the people of yeah. what I did. The here. generations to come. Generations to come. You can explain to them what yeah. happened here. So my paintings will be yeah. for the generations to come. I don't know if they'll last that, but I mean, it's there. And wow. then I'll tell the testimony to it. All right. That's really good. All right. Statement three. In the New Testament, there are repeated admin. I can't say that word. Yeah. Admonitions. Ad thank you to yeah. give thanks to God. Thanksgiving is always to be a part of our prayers. Some of the most remembered passages on living of, uh, of on giving of thanks are the following. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Well, let's talk about that. So rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God of Christ Jesus in you. So what is what is that saying? Break it down. Well, I, well rejoice is um, celebrating, right? Yeah. Praying is... Talking to your father, talking to your heavenly but father. I don't feel like it though. I mean, I my life yes. sucks right now, or I'm I lost my loved one at Thanksgiving time, or right. I I'm not, you know, I've lost my job, or I got fired, or how am I going to rejoice in that? How am I? I mean, I've I've just blew up my knee and I have to have surgery, or um, you know, whatever. I mean, there's so many. I have cancer, whatever it is. There's so many. Yeah, how things. do you do it in those? In the and it's when horrible. life isn't fair, right? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So rejoice always. What do we do to rejoice in those moments? Thoughts. 
now I had my train of thought and I lost it. I'm sorry. My um, bad. No, that's okay. So I, I so the way that I I did it. So when I was going through the, I, I mean, we still go through it. I mean, even today, we look at our politics today and our world today. It's just hmm. horrible. So I hadn't noticed. I always I always remember that Jesus is King. Okay, so He's always on the throne, and so I just say, God, I don't understand what's going on, but I am going to praise You no matter what. I'm going to choose that. I'm going to pray without ceasing because if I don't keep praying, I'm going to lose my marbles right now. Right. I mean, that's the truth. And so, but it's teaching us more than anything else. I mean, when we're going through some trials and tribulations, it kind of forces us to be in the presence of God more, or it forces us to be away from him. It but, may, it's a pivot point. It makes you make a decision. So in everything I do, I just give thanks. Okay. That's good. So the next one. Well, no, I, I think I remember what I was going to say. It's about that keeping that relationship, you know, keeping it strong, no matter what the circumstances are. I think too many times we like we, our joy and this is what happens when you focus on the world. Your joy is based on your circumstances. Yeah. But when you're in a relationship with, with God, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Yeah, it's- Phil, Phil, the great Phil Robertson, you know, the Duck Dynasty guy. Oh, yeah, the guy with the beard. Yeah, he said, Lord, if you bless me, I'll thank you. But if you don't, I'm going to thank you for what I have. Amen. So, again, it's the contentment. It's, yeah. it's just being in that moment, and he's going to be thankful no matter what. Rejoice. Very good. All right. All right. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made to, God, made to God. It's like he just, Paul says, hey, keep praying. But he says it four different ways here. <laughs> like do it in prayer, do it in supplication, which is what? It's still prayer, right? Yeah. With thanksgiving, now you're, you're still, that's still prayer. You're still thanking God. You're, you're communicating with your father and well, let your request. See, <laughs> it's all prayer. See yourself in the light of Christ. So you know, I think we don't want to come before the Father in a in a in a way acting like we're God. So what what he's saying is that, hey, listen, God, you're in charge. I understand that we're operating now in your economy. You're the one that's leading. You're the one that's directing. I trust that um, you are in charge and control. And so I'm going to be thankful and know. That you will never leave me nor forsake you, that forsake me, that you're going to be a part of every aspect of what I'm going mm-hmm. through, and that I know that you are for me and not against me. And so you're coming, you're, you're accepting yourself in the, in the light of Christ. So we're not anxious because we know God is good um, in everything. We know that we can pray. We can bring all of our, our baggage to him. And we know that um, he's going to know us. He's going to hear us and, and listen to us. And so that's probably one of the most famous ones, Philippians 4, 6. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, Paul also shares with Timothy. He says, therefore, I exhort first all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Yeah, all means all. All. <laughs> so, I so, I mean, it's it's talking about not only that, but why we pray for our friends. You know, in the last week's show, we talked about being in fellowship, right? Yeah. Being in the body of Christ. And, and we are to be intercessory prayers for that. So if you're in the body of Christ and you have fellowship, you want to be able to share. What I always share when I'm being stretched, if I ever say, Bob, to you, I'm being stretched, that means I'm going through a really bad trial. And, and, and those are like trigger words that you now know as the body of Christ, Hey, this is serious. And so as the body of Christ, we need to be praying for our brothers and sisters and we need to be there. It's a, it's, it, you need to be honest and vulnerable. And so we want to exhort that. But at the same time, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters. We want to be intercessory prayers. And, um, and so we be thankful that God gives you the opportunity to be, be that for people. And uh, have those opportunities that other people around you can can do that. So that's one reason why we want to be thankful. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, number four. If life's pains are getting the best of you during this time of Thanksgiving, maybe try some of these ideas that might help recenter your focus. Yeah, I mean, it's like when we're in pain or things are going out of control, we need to recenter. We need to just, all right, stop. Stop for a second. Let's try to get this under control. So here's what some things that we can do. Um, write a poem. Write out a prayer request. Paint something. I was just going to say, I was just going to add that. (laughs) That's awesome. Do something. Because what does it it do? It gets your mind off of the problem. And and if you're focusing on Jesus, like the painting was all focusing on God, Mm. right? The Thanksgiving poem, you're just telling God what you're focused on. You're getting your eyes off of that. 
and get it onto something else. All right, let's go to the next one. The next thing you could do is share Bible verses, yeah. you know, things that talk about Thanksgiving with your friends and family. I think this does two things, Pete. It, it, first of all, it helps focus it helps focus on the word of God, but it also helps get the focus off of you. Yeah. By 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 sending it to other people, you're thinking about other people. What do I share with other people? You get you into the word of God and it gets your mind off of yourself. Yeah, it's a it's like you said, it helps them and it helps you because it's I mean, you're going through the midst of it, then all of a sudden you're starting to quote the Bible and then things to be thankful for out to other people. Yeah. If the other people would only know, right? We just sometimes we just want to pour it all in. <laughs> oh my gosh, my world is turned upside down. It's so bad. It's all this stuff. And we're sitting there and we're we're quiet before the Lord. We're letting our friends, our closest friends, our fellowship know where we're at, but we're we're not we're not putting that bird in that baggage or whatever. Yeah. We're just saying, hey, we want to be a blessing to you. Let us let me be a blessing. I need this and I'm going to give it to you. And so it's just another another way. We have social media. Use it for God's glory. That's so good. Because yeah. I think too many times we we go on social media and it's, oh, woe is me. My life sucks. Uh, no, I mean, first of all, you're going to drive people away. Yeah. Nobody wants to carry your baggage. Yeah. So we if, all if, got problems. If you so want to lift people head. up, yeah. you know, if you want to if you want to lift yourself up, lift other people up. All right. Third thing you can do. Remember things of the past that you were thankful for. Yeah. Wow. So re remember, that, remember where God's been faithful. Well, right? that's kind of what we talked about with the pillars. So yeah. I, I, those past pillars that I have built in my life are, are those times that I can testify that God has been faithful. Hmm. And so bring those pillars, always meditate on those truths and don't let Satan lie to you. Right. So just deny him, just follow Jesus and know that he is good. All right. Good. Uh, number four, take communion and be thankful to Jesus for what he did for you. I, d I don't think there's any other better way. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you take communion, what are you doing? You're getting your focus off yourself and you're remembering the sacrifice that was made for you. You are, you're basically saying, I am recognizing in this moment that if I were to die today, I'm yeah. going to be able to go to heaven for all eternity with Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm breaking bread and I'm, I'm thanking him and I'm I'm acknowledging that. So no matter how bad it is here right now, <laughs> you have one day to look forward that all of our tears, all of our pain mm. will be wiped away and that we will be in fellowship with Jesus for the rest of our lives. You have a promise of a better feast than Thanksgiving Day. Yep. And waiting for us. That's it. And remember what Paul said? Paul said that when I'm absent from the body. I am present, present with, with the, the Lord. Lord. But he said, I fear, I do not fear the sting of death. For if I live, I live for Christ. But if I die, it is for my gain. And so it's the same thing. So we, if you take communion, go, you don't have to go to church, to take communion, No. go get some grape juice and go get some bread crackers or something. And, and yeah. just, and then, and go to first Corinthians, what is it? 11 and just say God or 12, we just say, God, I am just going to read this and I'm going to, I'm going to humble myself right now. I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to acknowledge mm. you. And I'm going to just ask that you would just uh, take this as an offering of thanksgiving. Awesome. And I do it for you in remembrance of you. Yeah, there you go. do this in remembrance of me, right? That's it. All right. One more. Right. Be a blessing to someone else and give your time or gift so that you may pass on Thanksgiving blessing to them. I love this one, Pete. Well, the whole world knows this one, yeah. right? Because, I mean, everybody says, oh, you know, for Thanksgiving, go feed the poor down at the... Yeah, right. Or, you know, your church does something, whatever. But just do this every day. This is, I mean, what we're saying, even though we're bringing that on Thanksgiving, this is like, we should do this all the time. As a Christian, as the body of Christ, we should always be blessing people. I, I had a couple of quotes that I think go with this well. So W.T. Perkiser says... Not what we say about our blessings, but how we use them is the true measure of our thanksgiving. And then Clement Stone said this, if you are really thankful, what do you do? You share. That's it. And, and, it's, and it should be just a Christian uh, flower of Christ. Here, let me share this with you. It, it should just be natural. There should not be, you should always be willing to just love on other people. Yeah, And the more you practice it, the more natural it becomes. The harder the trial, the harder the life circumstance, the more we should be out, being poured out as a drink offering to others. It, if you can some way, somehow find a way to serve in the midst of trial, mm. it's, it helps relieve the pain. It I'm, helps it. And then and what you're doing is you're saying to God, I trust you now, God, with everything. Yes. And I want you to be glorified in the midst of my pain. I know that when I am weak, you are now made strong. And you're telling the Lord that by doing that. 
and you're being honest with him and you're telling him, I'm vulnerable and I'm broken right now, God, but I know that you're greater. And I know that you're in charge and I know that you're in control and I'm going to serve and do this because I want your name to be glorified. So Lord, in my weakness, be strong. Lord, bless these people. Let me, and it should just be a natural part of your life. That should just be natural in everything that you do. So you're saying when I'm down, I'm at the end of my rope, I, oh, woe is me, I should go serve others? That's yes, that's what we're saying. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and it works. That's it. All right, finally, uh, statement five. We, like the pilgrims, have a choice. In life, there will always be those things that we can complain about. Um, the pilgrims had lost so many loved ones. Think about the numbers. What will we say? 44 out of the 102? But there, year. The I mean, first more, year alone. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But there will also be so much to be thankful for. For our society becomes increasing, as our society becomes increasingly secular, the actual giving of thanks to God during our annual Thanksgiving holiday is being overlooked unfortunately, leaving us only to feasting. May God grant that he may find us grateful every day for all of our gifts, spiritual and material. Yeah, I mean, it, and again, we're saying this because it's Thanksgiving, but it's every day, every day of our life. But Andrew Murray said this, he says, let us thank God heartily as often as we pray that we have his spirit in us to teach us to pray. Thanksgiving will draw our hearts out to God and keep us engaged with him. It will take our atten attention from ourselves and give the spirit room in our hearts. And so that's kind of what we've been saying, but Andrew Murray kind of said it best. And God is good, and every good gift comes from him. James 1.17 says mm -hmm. that. For those who know Christ, God also works everything together for good, even events we would not necessarily consider good. We would find that in Romans 8.28-30. And um, so today, our prayer for everybody that's listening is that may God find um, find us to be his grateful children. And um, and that's that's our bottom line. And that's our prayer is that today we would um, rest in God, that we would be content with where we're at in our life and that we would be thankful. Just have an attitude of gratitude. Yeah, and, it really is an attitude. And I think that it's a choice. You wake up in the morning and you choose. And even when it's hard, just get through it. God will get you through it. Um, you know, the, the worst thing that can happen to you is you die. Well, that's, that's the best so thing that happen to you because you're going to be with Jesus for all eternity. So just, just, you know, be attitude of gratitude. Let me close with this. Isaac Watt says this. How divinely full of glory and pleasure shall the hour be when all the millions of mankind that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God shall meet together and stand around him with every tongue and with every heart full of joy and praise. How astonishing will, the, will be the glory and the joy of that day when all the saints shall join together on one common song of gratitude and love and of everlasting thanks, thanks, thankfulness to this Redeemer. With that unknown delight and inexpressible satisfaction, shall all, shall all that are saved from the ruins of sin and hell address the lamb that was slain and rejoice in his presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. With that said, I just pray that we are um, thankful this time of the year and that we learn that uh, the reason why we're able to be thankful is because of what Jesus did on the cross. And if we did not have that opportunity to be able to know for certain that when we die, we're going to be with him in all of heaven or, or all uh, for all eternity in heaven, then it would not be a very thankful day. So we have hope. So if it's hard, we have hope. If there's, if there's, um, we're lack joy and peace, we have Jesus to help us with that. And if you don't know Jesus and you want to give your life to the Lord, you can do that today. You can just bow your heart and just say, God, Jesus, please forgive me of my sins and ask you to come into my life. Lord, be my Lord and Savior. And I choose today to follow you for the rest of my life. I choose to allow you to be my God and my King. And I choose to let you take over all aspects of my life. I believe in you. I rest in you. And, um, and you do that. You say that in Jesus' name. And Jesus says that if you are a tr full child of God, that he says that he will, he will, um, he will come and come your know, spirit of God will come into you, will, will rule and reign in your life and that you will have a new life, that your old life would pass away and behold, you will have a new life, a new life in Jesus. And that is the one thing that you can be most grateful for. 
If there's anything else in your life that you could be thankful, it's the day that you gave your life to Jesus. Man. And the Bible tells us that all the angels in heaven are rejoicing now. They're having a party. They're they're having a bigger Thanksgiving feast than we could ever have. But we would love to hear from you on that. And Bob, how could we hear from them if they given their life to the Lord? And we'd love to pray with them. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Reach out to our social media sites. You can go to uh, Facebook. You can go to Twitter. Go to The Riot Podcast. Uh, you can also go to our website, riotpodcast.co.co, and uh, click on the No God tab. Follow just you'll you'll see tons of information there, but reach out to us and let us know that uh, man we would that you made a decision. We would love to be able to rejoice with you like the angels in heaven are rejoicing. And then finally, if you haven't had the opportunity yet to check out um, our our Facebook our YouTube channel, I'd ask that you would do that. It's the Riot Podcast. Go and like and subscribe and uh, hit that little bell so you get notified every time. A new episode is released. So even if you're just listening to the podcast, you know, take some time and go check it out on, on YouTube as well. And then I want to just, Pete, I just want to close. Well, you know, we talked about this thing in Thanksgiving and, and uh, you know, being thankful when life isn't fair. And we talked about kind of the beginning of Thanksgiving. And you even mentioned how Lincoln had made it kind of a federal holiday. Mm. And uh, I wanted to just share a little kind of a, the first paragraph of, of that proclamation that President Lincoln made. But as a reminder, you know, context matters, right, Pete? We talk about that all the time in the Bible. Remember, he's writing this in the midst of a civil war. Mm -hmm. Brothers are, you know, killing brothers. And mm -hmm. the, the war, the, the country is at war with each other. There's bloodshed and 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 uh, just, it's awful. I mean, it's it's hell on earth in, in, a, in a lot of different ways. And uh, President Lincoln writes this and, you know, just makes Thanksgiving a national holiday. But here, here's how he starts the letter. I won't read the whole thing. You can always look it up. Um, just look up President Lincoln's um, Thanksgiving Day proclamation if you want to read the whole thing. But he starts this way. He says, the year that is drawing towards its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these beauties or to these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they have come. Others have been added, which are of, of so extraordinary a nature that they cannot fail to penetrate and soften even the heart, which is habitually insensible to the ever watching providence of almighty God. Remember, this is, this is a president of the United States calling the people to get on their knees and thank God for what he's done in this land. So uh, I would ask you to do the same with your families today. Don't just indulge in, in gluttony, but enjoy your meal and enjoy the fellowship. And remember to thank uh, our Heavenly Father for all the provisions that he's given us. God is good. May God bless you guys. May his face shine upon you this week as you just continue to be thankful in every aspect of your life. Be Happy blessed. Thanksgiving. This has been The Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of The Riot Podcast.